The title for this talk is Enzymes Involved in Phase 1 and Phase 2 Drug Metabolism. The learning outcomes are to have an understanding of enzymes involved in Phase 1 like cytochrome P450 and other Phase 1 enzymes. To understand the relative importance of these Phase 1 enzymes. To have an understanding of enzymes involved in phase 2, such as uridine diphosphoglucuronal transferase, UGT, and other phase 2 enzymes. And to understand the relative importance of these phase 2 enzymes as well. Introduction to phase 1 and phase 2 metabolism. Phase 1 of functionalization reaction exists to produce or uncover functional group for phase 2 by oxidation, reduction or hydrolysis. It prepares compound for phase 2. Phase 2 or conjugative reaction takes phase 1 products and are conjugated by phase 2 enzymes like uridine diphosphoglucuronal transferase UGT and sulfur transferase. They generally make the compound more water soluble and so can be readily excreted via the urine or bile. All of these processes are important in the drug discovery process as they are responsible for metabolizing various drugs which may lead to therapeutic or no therapeutic effect. Metabolism and overall drug clearance. The pie chart to your left shows the overall contribution of metabolism to clearance. You can see that metabolism accounts for 70% of the overall clearance that happens in the body, followed by renal clearance and hepatobiliary clearance. Of the 70% that is due to metabolism, 70% of that is largely due to cytochrome P450 and the remaining 30% are shared equally between UGT and other enzymes. So you can see from this pie chart that metabolism is very important to the overall drug clearance process and more importantly cytochrome P450 is responsible for the lion's share of the overall metabolism that happens in the body. Cytochrome P450 As already mentioned, 70% of the total metabolism that occurs in the body is due to cytochrome P450. They are membrane-bound enzymes located in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum or the microsomes which are ruptured endoplasmic reticulum. There are five major isoforms of cytochrome P450. By way of nomenclature, if you took cytochrome P450-CYP3A4, the letter CYP stands for the fact that they are cytochrome-containing enzyme. The 3 is the family, the A, the subfamily, and for the gene. So in CYP3A4, it's family 3, subfamily A, and gene 4. So the five major isoforms are CYP3A4, CYP2D6, CYP2C9, CYP2C19, and CYP1A2. In the panel to the right is the conversion of benzene by oxidation to phenol and the demethylation of phenyl methyl ether to phenol. In each of these processes, less water-soluble compounds are being made more polar and therefore made more readily excretable by the urine or the bile. Phase 1 drug metabolism by cytochrome P450 Cytochrome P450 enzymes catalyze thousands of different reactions. They are heme-containing enzyme of the mixed function oxidase system. 
which requires both atmospheric oxygen and a reducing system. So in this panel below, you can see the drug to be oxidized, RH, the oxygen from the atmosphere, and uh, a reducing, equivalent, a reducing equivalent in the way of NADPH. The product is oxidized drug, ROH, water, and oxidized NADP. Cytochrome P450 can bind carbon monoxide in their reduced form and they absorb UV maximally at 450 nanometers, hence their name cytochrome P450. In this graph, you can see that in the reduced form, it maximally absorbs UV at 450 nanometers and so they are called cytochrome P450. They can be universally blocked by one amino benzotriazole, one ABT, with the exception of C2C9. All are inducible by rifampicin and dexamethasone, with the exception of C2D6. And they can all be inhibited by selective inhibitors as well. Different SIP isoforms and pharmacogenetics. The pie chart to the left of your slide shows the contribution of different isoforms to the metabolism that happens in the body. SIP3 is responsible for 30% of the overall metabolism that happens in the body, followed by SIP2D6 at 20%. Together between CYP3A4 and CYP2D6, they are responsible for 50% of the overall metabolism that occurs in the body. So these two isoforms take the lion's share of what isoforms are responsible for which length of metabolism. But these isoforms of cytochrome P450 also ex exhibit some pharmacogenetics, such as CYP2D6, has between 5 to 10 percent of Caucasians who are classified as slow metabolizers and 30 percent of East Africans as extensive or ultra rapid metabolizers. The consequence of these pharmacogenetics will be looked at in the next slide. CYP2C19 has 25 percent of Asians not expressing it and 3% of Caucasians. In CYP2C9, 1% Caucasian does not express CYP2C9. With CYP3A4, though it's not polymorphic, it has approximately 40% variability in its expression level, which means the reaction rate will differ from population to population. The consequences of pharmacogenetics can be visualized in this slide where we're looking at the conversion of codeine to morphine by CYP2D6 O demethylation. The graph to the right of the slide shows the formation of morphine from codeine as a function of time. In poor metabolizers, if codeine was given to them for controlling pain, they may not have adequate pain control because the level of codeine, the level of codeine conversion to morphine is sub-therapeutic level. Conversely, in the extensive and ultra-rapid metabolizers, the conversion of codeine to morphine is very rapid such that it might lead to morphine toxicity such as respiratory suppression and constipation. So to mitigate for these two extremes of pharmacogenetics, to control pain in poor metabolizers, they are best given morphine directly. And in the extensive and ultra rapid metabolizers, they are given indeed CYP2D6 inhibitors or lower dose of codeine so that they will not experience 
morphine toxicity. Uridine diphosphoglucuronal transferase, UGT. As already mentioned, they are responsible for 15% of the total metabolism that occurs in the body. They are membrane-bound enzymes as well, and they are located in the smooth and the plasmic reticulum. They also exist as isoforms, of which UGT1A1 is the most abundant. They require uridine diphosphoglucuronic acid, UDPGA, as cofactors. They are inducible by rifampicin and could be inhibited by diclofenac and other drugs. The active site structure of UGT is shown to the bottom of the slide, which shows it to have six beta sheets and seven alpha helixes, which makes the drug fit perfectly into its active site. Phase two conjugation reactions. In this example, we're looking at the phase two conjugation of phenol by sulfation to O sulfate conjugate of phenol or by glucuronide conjugation to O glucuronide conjugate of phenol or by methylation to O metal conjugate of phenol. So in these instances, the phenol has been made more water soluble by the conjugation which has happened with the exception of O metal conjugate which is not as readily water soluble as the phenol from which it started from. There are other phase 1 and phase 2 enzymes. C450s and UGT are not the only phase 1 and phase 2 enzymes. Other phase 1 enzymes are alcohol dehydrogenase, aldehyde oxidase, which are capable of performing oxidative steps. In this example, propanolol is being acted upon by alcohol dehydrogenase to give propaldehyde, which is being further oxidized by aldehyde oxidase to propionic acid by a series of one-step oxidation. We have flavin monoxidases, which can oxidize trimethylamine to its N oxide to form trimethylamine N oxide. We have aldehyde dehydrogenases ALDH, monoxidases MAO, and xanthinoxidases, nitroreductases, which are capable of reducing nitrobenzene to aniline and azoreductases. And finally, we have esterases and amidases. There are other phase two enzymes, which are sulfur transferase ST, metal transferase MT, Catechol O metal transferase COMT, which is capable of methylating catechol to its metoxy form, as shown in the panel to the right. We have N acetyl transferases, which are capable of N acetylating aniline to acetanilide. We have acyl transferases, phosphotransferases, glutathione sulfur transferase, GST. What is common to all these enzymes is they're all functional group selective as they catalyze the oxidation or the reduction of such functional groups. Other phase 1 and phase 2 enzymes account for approximately 15% of the total metabolism that occurs in the body. 
the location of other phase 1 and phase 2 metabolic enzymes. The idea behind this table is to show us the subcellular location of each enzyme and the cofactor that may be required. It's there to give us a guide as to which assay test system we should be using for which particular enzyme. So if we are looking for the involvement of aldehyde oxidase, we will use cytosol as our test system. If we're using for the involvement of aldehyde dehydrogenase, we could use either the cytosol or the mitochondria as our test system. And if we are looking for the involvement of flavin monoxidase, we will use the microsome as our test system for the investigation. So the whole purpose of this table is to indeed be an aid memoir of where the enzymes are located and so give guidance as to which assay test system to use and whether they require cofactor or not. In conclusion, we've learned that the most prominent enzymes involved in phase one and phase two drug metabolism are cytochrome P450 and UGT. There are other less abundant enzymes such as aldehyde oxidase, alcohol dehydrogenase, xanthine oxidase, nitroreductase, and catechol or methyltransferase. All of these enzymes are found in different subcellular locations such as the microsomes, which is ruptured smooth in the plasmic reticulum, the cytosol, and mitochondria. They are all important in the drug discovery process, as one or more of them may be responsible for the metabolizing of our compounds of interest. Thank you for your attention.